Hello, everyone. And and uh, I today I have the every, everyone from the upcoming film. Well, actually, released film, uh, Paper Tiger, which is on VOD now uh, via Gravitas Ventures, I believe. Yes, Correct. Gravitas Ventures. Um, it's a quick synopsis. Is basically an immigrant mother. This is the log line. Is an immigrant mother fears her mentally ill. Uh, teenage son is turning into a school shooter. Um, so I want to start with you, Paul. Um, where did the, let me turn my gain down really quick because I feel really loud in my ears. Um, no, great, man. Um, but um, wh where did this idea come from? Sure, sure. Well, first of all, thanks for having us, Austin. We're happy to be here. Thank you no for problem. giving us the platform. So the film is obviously, you know, a lot about mental health, mental illness, and um, that kind of comes from my own experiences with having people close to me who are afflicted, um, and and also partially inspired by the facts that come from a um, a true story that happened here in Los Angeles about six years ago that I'd seen in the news when I was a student at AFI. So those things kind of all came together, and then obviously um, also, you know, the story at its heart is a mother son story. And we have our mother and our son here with us today. And that's sort of based on my experiences, my friend's experiences being immigrants in America. And, you know, once I found Lydia and Alan, that definitely became the core of the film. And, and we explored and collaborated with, with all that together. So that's the, that's the origin of the, of, the, of the script, really, and the story, the beginnings of our film. Okay. And actually, speaking of Alan, um, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. So, so just looking at some of the other films you've done like um, Alita Battle Angel, Tomorrow War, you did Daybreak, uh, all of which I've seen. They're very sci-fi heavy films. And it's interesting because this is just not that. This is a very grounded film. So I guess yeah. what drew you to just kind of stay out of that um, realm of disbelief and go into something a lot more grounded uh, than past work thanks for asking that question austin um when i was in austin texas you know um first starting in acting like my friends and i we would actually just do indie films together you know like my, some of my friends were in film school and we would just do that and the sci-fi thing wasn't really even my trajectory or intention i guess that's just the opportunities that uh the universe has put in um, but as far as something like Paper Tiger, it's a little bit more grounded, um, uh, less money, um, less like CGI stuff. Like that's something that I've always felt connected to. And, um, I hope to do more of that, you know? <laughs> also Austin, uh, I mean, I think it's worth saying that, um, the, you know, the, the manager I had, who's Alan's current manager. Um, he introduced me to Alan. I remember Alan, you just moved to to LA from Austin, like what, like a week when I met you. You were yeah, in LA. when we met. I was just like looking for apartments in Los Angeles, and for like so you know this this manager, his name's John. He he um, he showed me some tapes of Alan's shorts, and Alan had at that point long hair and a mustache, and I was like, this guy's great, but he's just way too old. He looks like a twenty five year old dude. He can't play a high school kid. And then I don't know if you cut your hair or you shaved your mustache before the audition but then it started to like no well we, we used our imagination but that was the connection there and i guess like i caught alan at a very early stage maybe if it was a couple of years later he would have been too big for a film like this but he did a fantastic job as did lydia and i'm, I'm so pleased with the cast because you know 90 percent of filmmaking and directing is casting so if you get that right austin there's not a lot you have to do <laughs> yeah i've actually um seen that a bit before, you know, Alan, you talk about just hanging out and making indie movies. Yeah. It's actually something I hear a lot more often than not, which, you know, doesn't occur to the common, you know, person that somebody's just like, oh yeah, I'll just go take a summer and do this indie film um, just because I want to do it. Yeah. And I think that's a conversation that's missing a, a whole lot in the industry right now it's just hey i'm doing these big films but there's also this film in the background that i'm really passionate about yeah 
like Lydia, do, like, do you relate to this at all of just like an artist living in Los Angeles where a lot of times like you feel, you know, like it's like there's so much that you don't have control over and like, do you, or like you two, Paul, like, do y'all find refuge in just like, you know, like creating your own content, I guess, because it's like, I, I mean, I, I feel so much more. I guess fulfilled, you know, with doing that. Totally. I mean, I guess you guys as actors definitely feel that, right? At, at least as a director, I can, and I know you guys write and do other things, but you can sit, you can write, you can slowly get a project together. But I think it's an age old discussion of art versus commerce, right? And there's certain projects that sell and that you do to pay the bills. And then there's passion projects like this that are very hard to get funded because they're, they're a little bit darker and, and they're not on a huge scale. And, you know, we have creative control, but it's a testament also to places like the Austin Film Festival or XRM Media and Michael Chow, who are, you know, kind of executive producers that believed in us and let us put this together. Because, you know, Austin, I think the, the films you mentioned, Tomorrow War, the, um, Alita, those have a, a little bit more, quote unquote, box office potential, right? Because they can go broader and they have a, a machine behind them. We don't really necessarily, we didn't start with that in mind with Paper Tiger. Um, and Lydia, you, I guess you probably feel the same way. Well, I think sometimes when you just chance upon an indie project that doesn't pay or pays very little, and there's sometimes when you just, you know, from page one, when you open the page, you can't say no to it, yeah. you know? It, and for me, that was, I mean, I certainly that was my experience when I opened uh, the first page of Paul's script. And, you know, I read it in one go to the end. And, the, and when I closed the script, I said, I'm going to play Lily, you know? And which is funny because then we auditioned you for for uh, May. And he didn't want me for Lily in the beginning. He wanted me. He he called me in to play the best friend. Yeah. So yeah. But well, I already well, knew when I when I read the script, that was not the role for me. Yeah, I, I think uh, Lydia is definitely more of a Lily, and, and that was apparent in her first audition. Well, so. I could play May as well, but I really wanted to play. Of Lily. course, you can play anything. Actors can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, speaking of that, you know, Lydia. Um, you're multi-talented. I mean, it, oh. it, you've done, I think you've done theater, you've done voice acting um, yeah. for, um, oh shoot, um, a ton. The, the list is uh, you so numerous, um, you. but you've, you're also doing movies. And it, um, I guess, how do you transition between all of those different things? Because, you know, Voice work requires a very, you know, you, don't, you have to kind of rely on the inflection. Yes. And in uh, theater, you have to rely on gestures. But in movies, you kind of have to rely a lot on the facial expression. Yes. Um, so how do you, I guess, when you do all that, mm -hmm. um, how do you transition? Um, into I think the mediums may be different for television, the voiceover, books on tape, theater, you know, the medium is different, but the overlying thing, I think, I mean, the overlying element that is, that, that you need, or at least I feel, uh, remains the same, which is your truth and your vulnerability. And I think I try to bring that to everything. I mean, to every project, irregardless of whether it's a hundred million dollar film, which I've done, or a $500,000 film. Yeah. It remains the same. The fabric is the same. Um, the anchor is the same. Yeah. It's just, you know, the technique varies. And as you do more, you know, you learn to kind of finesse that technique a little bit. But the technique really isn't the paramount thing. The truth and vulnerability is always the most important thing as an actor. And um, Paul, yeah. I've got a quick, uh, so, you talk about coming out of the AFI conservatory. Um, what what are some of the things you learned that maybe you'd want to give some advice to somebody who's making a movie in their backyard? Um, like sure, 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 sure. So the first thing I'd say is film school doesn't give you a voice, right? Kishlovsky, a Polish, I'm Polish. He's one of my favorite directors. He's he. He went to Łódź Film School in Poland and, and he, he got out and many years later he, he said something which has stuck with me, which is, you know, I guess this applies to gurus and, and, and your idols too, but film school doesn't give you a voice. 
You know, that's something you discover on your own. And the way to do that is by making films. So the more you do something, if you make five, six, seven, ten shorts, you're going to start to see what it is that really defines you. And that's really, I think, the main reason to, to do any art and to make films is to figure out what's going on inside of you, you know. So what I learned at AFI and, you know, any time, you know, I made a film is that it's OK to fail. It's a very normal part of the process. So a lot of it is, you know, I, I guess, Alan and Lydia, you could probably relate. No one's going to stand up on your first try in a scene or in a, in a play. And you're not going to necessarily be amazing. My first films surely weren't amazing. But I think the key thing is to, um, to keep doing it and understand that it's a process. You know, oftentimes people try and get things perfect or actors try and make a scene perfect, you know, and get it right, do it the same way every time. That's really not what it's about. It's, a, it's about exploration. It's about discovery. It's about getting up when you fall, putting in your 10,000 hours, you know, and, um, and learning a language of whatever your art form is. And that comes slowly and it comes with diligence and patience and, um, and all those things. I could go on, but I won't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely um, repetition is really, just speaking from a writer's point of view and, you know, or whatever you want to call, um, um, call that. Um, it, I was talking with a director, which I won't name because we talked privately um, it's, Steven, it's Steven Spielberg. It's okay. Just say it, Austin. Oh, oh it's, he, he, he's much. <laughs> but, I, I, um, but I'll just say it was from a Sundance not, uh, collection that I recently reviewed. We had a, this great chat about, you know, there are things that you just kind of have to hit your head on the wall about um, mm -hmm. to figure it out. You just kind of have to figure it out as you go along, you know, because the more um, you do it, the more you learn about your own voice. And mm. I, I'm sure that's true for all of you, as, I mean, as you said, Paul. No, that's um, the only way to do it. There's no shortcut. There's no shortcut. And you know, you, what you're saying about writing makes me think of Kurosawa. He's one of my favorite directors and he, he has so many, you know, Zen-like uh, aphorisms about how to pursue writing and directing. And one of them is, you know, he likens it to climbing a mountain. And he says, the first thing you learn when you're climbing a mountain is you never look at the top because you're going to give up one step at a time. And the other thing he says is facing the abyss, right? Well, that might, might've been Nietzsche, but Kurosawa says there's a wall when you're writing. And the key thing is just chiseling away at this iron wall one day at a time, you know, that's the key to it. Yeah. People talk too much about talent. People talk too much about, you know, genius. It's really not that. It's perseverance. It's sticking with something. And it's really dedicating yourself to a process and an art that takes a long time to get right. It's true for making a movie. It's true for writing a script. Alan and Lydia, I guess it's true for like cracking a character, right? And not, not defaulting to tricks or to, to some kind of method, but just digging deep. So that's, that's why we're all here, ultimately, you know? And I don't know if those bigger films or the more commercial stuff we're talking about, they always have that in mind as, a, as an exploration. I think it's more about making money oftentimes. And that's where things get murky. And then we, we have big films that don't mean a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah, especially now with streamers buying up smaller and smaller films and putting it in front of people. I do get kind of concerned about the implications of that, um, where it's, they're being used as marketing machines rather than actual pieces of media. I think we're all concerned about that. But, you know, the thing that I always revert to without getting too pessimistic is thinking that all these different platforms, that there's always going to be a need for stories, right? And storytellers. And in whatever capacity that will go on, it has since, you know, ancient times, right? With, with drama and plays and Greek tragedy, whatever, until the present. So it's an ancient medium. It just keeps finding these new forms. I mean, cinema itself is so, it's like, what, 100 years old, right? 120, 30 years old. So, something like that. Something like that, yeah. So it, it will be okay. We just got to keep the faith and we need people like you, Austin, talking about films and, and publicizing, giving people like us a platform and we'll be fine. Well, I'm glad you all could join, it, join me today after all the hectic week that it, it's going to be and with festivals coming up, it's going to be pretty hectic. But yeah, yeah. Um, people at home, you guys can watch uh, Paper Tiger on VOD. Uh, 
all out right now. Um, and it's just Paper Tiger. It should be everywhere you rent movies. I mean, uh, if you don't, but don't go to Fandango now because that's not part of Vudu. Just go to Vudu for that. Yeah, I, it's on it's on Apple TV, iTunes, Amazon. Yeah. I mean, those are the big ones to find it. Yeah. Paper Tiger, put 2021 in the search because there's, you know, there's been a lot of films called Paper Tiger to make sure you're finding the right one. <laughs> yeah, I, I accidentally uh, was thinking of the Netflix film from later this year or? Yeah. Let's not, let's not talk about that film. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for joining me. It's been a Thank pleasure. you for your time, Austin. It's a pleasure Thank to talk Austin. to you. Austin. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all too. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you.